I felt like I was going to go for it this time, and if I fell, it would have been okay. I get it. I made it this far without falling. I deserve one fall. It's okay. You've got to expect some, you know, some accidents to happen. I just think it's hard. I mean, but it's hard for Rob me to let you grow up, and I think it's important that we do that. And this is a rite of passage. Uh, you're your own man now, and you got your don't need us. You've got the karaoke handed over to you. Yeah. You, you jump in without my help anymore? I can, I can launch off the stool all by myself. You have an incredibly pretty package. I mean, you just got it all. <laughs> and you got an autobiography written. <laughs> About your package. It's been right. a very busy weekend. By and for your package. I've never felt ever like anybody was staring at my package more than right now. So. Oh, that's, uh, by the way, hold on. I'm, cr I'm calling, I'm crying foul on that one. Not true. You got, a, there's you an got entire corridor named yeah. after your package. After your package. This, from that end of the stage to that end of the stage, is named for your junk. So That's don't you tell me that you feel like you're more on display tonight. All right, well, well, second only to that time is, is this the other time where I feel like we're talking about my package. I so mean, that, so, that unitard was unbelievable. <laughs> it was one step above spray paint. I'm telling you, it was unforgiving. No mystery left. <laughs> Anything else on that? You know, another time people looked at this package a lot? Kings of Con video when he ran naked through the streets. Oh, oh my God. man. A lot of package washing there. I saw a lot of that. By my neighbors. Yeah, well, <laughs> I've never seen Rob. One of us had to shoot the wide shot from far away. One of us had to follow him. Rob's never volunteered faster. I want to be right there. There's nothing like seeing that package unpackaged. <laughs> That package affected by the gentle breeze of Silver Lake. It wasn't a moose knuckle, it was just a moose. <laughs> Somewhere Jared is offended. <laughs> you just called his penis, Jared kind of like it. And let it be known, from this day forward, I will refer to my package as the moose from now on. Yeah. That means well, the squirrel. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it, 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 somewhere Ackles was like, I don't like where this is going. I don't, I don't like where this joke took a turn. Not a fan. Hold on. I'll tell you what we're not doing. We usually ask what we're doing. Here's what we're not doing. Um, let's, let's, let's get into questions, because it, it can only go up from here. Yeah. That's probably a bad joke to make in reference to a package, but we're going to say that anyway. Oh, right. Young lady? Hi. So, my question is, what's a character on Supernatural that you relate to? Uh, a character on Supernatural that we relate to? Mm-hmm. Uh, Robbie? Uh, relate to Supernatural character on Supernatural. Character on Supernatural you relate to. Let me kill time by asking you, what character do you relate to? Dean. Dean? That makes she, sense. She thought about um, that. Uh, I, I relate to Chuck. Chuck. I really feel like I relate to Chuck. Chuck. 
Um, not so much God as just Chuck, the, just locking himself in his house, drinking all day, and writing something I can relate to. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Is my mic on? Yeah. It was weird. Is uh, my mic is coming through my earphones like at a, at a deafening sound, and I can't hear you at all. So I have I have the. That's right. lucky you. What? Yeah. Um, um, I'm going to go with. Uh, I don't. I feel like it's just the character I played, but that's. But I don't like sweets that much. Other than that, and I don't kill people. But other than that, and I'm not an angel. But other than that, which which character they which character that you play? Uh, uh, um, the uh, Gabriel. Gabriel. I think I think Gabriel more so than Trickster. Uh, or, you're, you're much more Trickster. But Gabriel's kind of the same guy. Like he's like stole the because the real Loki revealed himself, and he's a different kind of a more monotone dude. So the the thing you're thinking of who's Loki is actually Gabriel pretending to be Loki. So it's still Gabriel. Yeah, I'm not going to play any <laughs> game with you. I'm not going to play the. <laughs> I've seen the show. Game. I, I directed the episode, so I know the details. Yeah. Game. Uh, Matthew. Does it have to be a character we played? Is that what's no. 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 Oh, I was going to say Baby. I was going to say I relate to yeah. the character yeah. Baby. And I don't know why yet, but I'll have an answer by next year, early in the convention schedule. Yeah, so stay tuned. Yeah. Thank you for your question. You! Hi! Hello. My question's for Richard. Yes? Since Rob won't be able to be at the Decatur shows, our friend Erica wants to know if you could come and sing. Richard, go to Atlanta on Monday? Uh, no. I cannot go to Atlanta on Monday, but I believe the shoes are being filled by. Is it, uh, we, do we know how what the, what's happening in, in response to your absence? Maybe you know something I don't. I mean, the, sh the show is always going to be Jason and Brianna and uh, Swain. Right. So they're just kind of filling in. The other two are going to do more songs. Yeah, the, the, the other two are doing more songs, and uh, I think that they're they're planning some some fun stuff. I mean, I think you'll have more occasion for one of those two people to be singing a loud Swain song and. Uh, they've been practicing all day up in a different room, so I don't know. Yeah, and I'm not privy to it. I'm sure it'll be fun. It'll be probably missed, and I don't think I would be much of a help. I think uh, I, I don't. I'm not sure I can fill those shoes, but they will do their best, and they'll have a heck of a couple I think, shows. Yeah, I, think I think it's going to be a good show. The yeah. last time I had to miss a show was because I was detained in London, uh, along with Billy, and uh, Jason was uh, had to play alone. And people say it was one of the best shows they've ever seen. So. Uh, <laughs> All right, no, I read that for myself. <laughs> but people seem to have a really good time, so I think it's going to be magical. It was, it was scribbled in feces on the wall. Yeah, exactly. Um, Your own feces. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. But ironically, Billy's handwriting, so yeah. it's, it's one of those hey, things. It's a long 24 hours. Long 24 hours. <laughs> Thank you for your question. But, yeah, you. I'm sure you'll end up having a great time. And... You, right there. Hi. Hi. Okay, so this is a follow-up from a question I asked in Atlanta 2016. And I'm sure we all remember that one like it was yesterday. But my friends and I never got an answer, so we want to know, how do you get Dick from Richard? Listen, a dumb question that doesn't get asked in 2015, doesn't get answered in 2018. Good luck, see you in three years. You. Wow. You. <laughs> but my question is for Rob. <laughs> I was wondering if, um, do you think Chuck has any plans to rebuild heaven? To rebuild heaven? Yeah, we just got the paperwork, the architect turned in the draft. Uh, I like what is done. I need to redo the study um, in the library, but the, my office looks amazing. The bedroom's good. Um, and there's a great outdoor area uh, for a wiffle ball. Which we all like to do up in heaven. So yeah, you know, the video, nice. it's going to take a while. It's going to be a pain in the neck. I think it's smart that you're doing an indoor outdoor living feel. Yeah, you know, take exactly. advantage of the yeah. modern. No, it's very climate. modern. It's very modern. Uh, uh, I was going to say everyone's going to be jealous, but I think there's no. I mean, it's, you know, I'm the only god. There's really no one on my par. Really, didn't be competitive with. Uh, I kind of kind of what I says go, say goes. But uh, anyway, no, I was very excited about it. It's a real big place. Am I rebuilding heaven? Yeah, I mean, well, yeah, I mean, we got a lot of work to do. We have a lot of work to do. There's definitely a lot of work to do, and at some point, I'd like to come back, uh, maybe, maybe to the show and like straighten things out. This this Michael is really a, a pain in my ass. So, uh, I mean, yeah. he's, he's one of my sons, so I can, I can, I'd love to grab by the ear and say, uh, now listen here. <laughs> so, anyway.
anyway, yeah, working on it. Thank you. Oh, thank you. Thank I'm you. sorry for my answer. Very excited. <laughs> <laughs> I can't tell if you guys can't hear me or you just I can't hear you're not with me. I can't hear much, but uh, I was like, we're big rebuilding, we're doing the rebuilding the bedroom, you know. What do you want to step in the magic? Yeah, right there. Hi. Um, back in season five, when Kali had stabbed you, uh, you said the only reason why you survived was because you made a fake blade out of a soda pop can. So I wanted to know, when Lucifer killed you, what do you think happened? Did he stab the wrong Gabriel, or kill you with the fake soda pop blade? What happened, Rich? So it's funny, we were just having this conversation, Bubba. <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> Here, I remember. I, I'm dead. I got killed by whatever that blade's made out of. Soda can. Soda, I saw it happen. Soda can and I, and it, but soda can's ironically the only thing that can actually kill me, so I'm dead. That's right. Sorry. There you go. Oh well. Answers. Shit happens. <laughs> Thank you. Yo. Uh, yes, my question is to Matt. Hi. Uh, my question is, how much of Sam and Dean's destiny do you think John actually knew about? Well, um, when it comes to destinies, and Sam and Dean, and John, is there anything, other parts of your question I'm missing? That's all. Right? I don't think so. I don't, I, I think he, did, he didn't know any of their destiny. What do you think? Well, when John sold his soul, and gave the call to Azazel, he said that he knew about, at least about Sam's destiny, but I'm not sure if he knew about Dean's. I'm gonna be honest. So. He, he wasn't being honest. He was, he made that up. Uh, <laughs> good to know. Yeah, sorry. Okay. He wasn't being truthful on the show. Don't trust him. <laughs> Anything else? No, that's it. That's it. Thank, Thank you for your lovely question. <laughs> Thank you for your question. You. Yeah. Oh, okay. Asking the tough questions. A lot of tough questions. We really tough time. questions. Hello, you, right there. Hi. Hi. Um, what's your favorite TV show besides Supernatural? All right, my favorite TV show. Man, there's a lot of good TV out there. I'll tell you what I just watched. I just finished watching season two of Ozark. Which is great. Did you know? Yeah. And now, another show that I'm watching that is not current, that I, you know, I do a lot of realizing that I've missed great series and gone back and I go back and watch them. And I travel on a plane, so I'll download them and watch them on the old iPad. So the series I'm watching right now, which is very old, but it's phenomenal, is Deadwood. And it's unreal how good it is. And it's Tim Amundsen, Jim Beaver. Jim Beaver's all over the thing. I heard to think of, uh, oh, uh, Titus Welliver, who's on uh, the show you're working on, and on Supernatural at one point. Timothy Olyphant. Timothy Olyphant. I mean, it's a phenomenal, but like the Supernatural alums, there's a bunch of folks from... Was Titus on this show? Yeah. I didn't know that. Yeah. It's a great show. So, I'm, so that's what I'm watching right now. I'm watching, uh, just started season two of Deadwood. Um, what did you think of season two of Ozark? Phenomenal. Oh, I, I, I love that show. I love that show. We asked you about that you'd seen season two and you got angry. Um, you? Well, because you like to give away plot points. They call it Bobby Spoiler Alert Benedict is uh, his street name. Okay. Well, that's what was scribbled in feces on the cell wall, I'm just saying. Oh, you were there too? Yeah. Yeah, I'm going to say Ozark. I really liked Ozark. Ozark's I so good. I just finished a show called The First that uh, Sean Penn is in on Hulu. I can't decide if I liked it. It was very interesting. Uh, I kind of need a season two to... Uh, Figure that, figure out if I liked it or not. But uh, I really love Ozark. Excited they're doing a third season of that. Oh, is that announced? They're definitely doing a yeah. awesome. Yeah. It's a great show. I started watching, not scripted, but uh, in an improv comedy show called Two Mics uh, on Netflix. It's uh, oh, Mike. It's David Tell oh, and Mike. Jeff Ross, I want to say, and they, it's they literally are like the comedy cellar wherever they are, and it's no preparation, and they kind of just like improv roast each other. And then to cut away from there, they have them in like the park in Manhattan playing chess with a random guy, just try, trying to make them laugh. It's really actually well done. And two unexpected comedians to be working off each other, I, th I think. But they're best friends, it turns out. 
Yeah, I, I had no idea. I just would never. I've known both of those guys' solo careers uh -huh. and watched them forever, and then they're really funny on stage. And then they, every time they bust each other up real good on stage, they cheers. It's, a, it's really fun. It's Who the like, dude? Uh, it's uh, uh, it's Jeff talk. Ross. Jeff Ross and Attell, David Attell. Oh, yeah. yeah. I saw the few before. I want to see it's, that. It's good. You like it? It's sharp. Oh, what's it called? I think it's called Two Mike. Two Mike. And is that a Netflix thing? It's a Netflix. Series. It's amazing. I mean, how much TV has changed. If you look back to when Supernatural started airing to now, how different the TV landscape is in terms of quantity and quality. It's amazing. How much? I think I think it's for the better myself. I mean, I think you know it used to be one one HBO doing original programming and everything else was network, and now you have so many cool platforms and cool networks doing interesting shows. What's your favorite show right now, other than Supernatural? NCIS Los Angeles. NCIS Los Angeles. Good TV. Rock solid television. That one. That's also been on forever, right? And then another been on for ten plus year show. Awesome. Well, thank you so much for your question. Hi. Hi. How are you? Fantastic. And yourself? Nervous. Nervous? Oh, there's no reason to be nervous. Yeah. You'll ask the question and we'll butcher the answer. <laughs> <laughs> My question is for Rich. Mm -hmm. uh, I was wondering what it was like for you working on Lucifer as a director and how it was different from Supernatural. Ah, okay. So, for those who don't know, I just re I recently directed an episode of Lucifer uh, for thank you for Netflix, uh, which will be out in the spring. Um, it was a phenomenal experience, and of course, I always feel like these answers feel like fake because, of course, we're going to come here and say it's great, they're great, but they really are great. Uh, one of the, the what's different about it for me is that I don't it's not my home. Supernatural is a place where I've gone to work since season two, off and on, and so I've developed friendships with the crew and the cast that were in place long before I ever directed. So even when I directed, as new and as scary as it was to direct Supernatural, I still had this little bit of a comfort zone of seeing familiar faces all around me as I entered into that new adventure. Lucifer was the exact opposite, I didn't know anybody. Through conventions, we met Tom Ellis a few times, who plays Lucifer, and um, Amy Garcia, and we met Ildi, the sh one of the, the co-showrunner. And they were all, they're all super, super lovely, but they weren't around so much during pre-production. So it was really nerve-wracking for me to be in a new space with new people. I mean, it's like, we've all done it. We've all, we've all had our first day at school or our first day at the new job, and it's intimidating. So I had that. But what is similar, aside from the elements of the show that are similar, because the show has like supernatural comedy elements, drama elements, supernatural elements. There's, there's a lot of parallels between the two universes. But what it has that is very similar to Supernatural that makes it a fun place to work is it has outstanding, outstanding, upbeat, positive, and gifted leadership at the top of the call sheet. We have Jared and Jensen who do a phenomenal job day in, day out, acting their face off and putting everything they've got into playing these characters they've been playing for 14 years. And that creates an awesome, healthy, and collaborative creative environment on that set. And everybody who comes behind them, whether it be Misha or Mark Shepard in his day or Alex Calvert now who, who become part of the cast or Sam Smith or Ruth Connell, everybody gets to benefit from the tone they set and the crew does as well. The same can be said for Tom Ellis and for Lauren German. They set an amazingly friendly tone on that set that is welcoming to the new people, they want you to succeed, they want new ideas, they want fresh perspective, and they're happy to do what they can do to help you do your job really well. So in, in that regard, it's very similar to Supernatural. And again, we say this all the time, that's super rare. So it was great to go to a set where, and then not just Lauren and Tom, they set the tone, then here come Amy and Kevin and DB and everybody being super awesome and super warm and super friendly. So it was a great experience in that regard to be a part of that show and visit that house for an episode. It was really cool. Thank you for your question, by the way. Hi. Hey. Um, so this is for all of you. I was wondering who you think your character would get along with best in the, in the cast. Oh, who, like, real, uh, okay. I think that Gabriel would get along really well with Misha. <laughs> I feel like, awesome. 
I just feel like Misha's also devious and, and up to no good often. And a bit of a, you know, got a crafty twinkle in his eye, so to speak. And I think, you know, Gabriel has sort of that same thing. And I, they, they probably do things to excess in certain regards. He has a very generous person. Who? Misha. He, he is. In, in his downtime, he also is very, very generous. But, uh, you know, I think Misha's a bit of a, an imp in a fun way. Interesting. Yeah. You? Ah, uh, Chuck, Chuck, Chuck. Um, man, I... Uh, oh, no! Uh, who did he... <laughs> Um, I think, I think he'd like to hang out with like the, the writers more than any of the actors, but um, if I had to pick one, Pellegrino, Mark Pellegrino, simply because Mark is a very uh, sort of, uh, he's an intellectual person, deep in thought a lot of the time, and um, kind of sits back and assesses things, and I can see maybe Chuck aligning with him, sitting down with him. Um, yeah, Mark doesn't really drink, but uh, Chuck, could, he could not do that for a bit, just hang out with Mark. Yeah, that's good. Put the bottle down for an hour, you know, when you go out, right? right? Maybe shake his way through a conversation with Mark, you know? Yeah. Um, Matthew? Uh, I say uh, young, young John would, would, would hang out well with Jason Manns. Jason Mans, uh, a, man, a man of good morals, young, young John, young John, man, man of good morals, uh, uh, a true gentleman, opens the door for a lady, um, yeah, so, somebody here loves doors, that's right, doors, woo, doors, points of entry, woo, um, yeah, so I go, I go young John, his buddies with, with Jason Mans, um, Michael? I wish you didn't ask that, sorry. <laughs> Michael, well, man. This is a tough one, this is a tough this one. This is a tough one because you want to take it to the real life personality, not, to, not, not the character. Uh, I'm gonna say Michael would, would, would unfortunately in, in enjoy Jared Padalecki very much. <laughs> Those two very powerful men would get along, tormenting, and taking control of all sorts of weird situations together. <laughs> Let your minds run wild. I think, I think if, I, if I'm answering for God, I think God would like to hang out with Jed Snackles because he's the most perfect human being. Yeah. Just to show up, like, right down to the ear canal, yeah. right? Just to go like, yeah, wait, good, yeah, no, good job, me. Just, yeah. Just like, <laughs> Good job, me. <laughs> like, is it like this? You think, you think God would go up to Ackles and be like, hey, like those ear canals? Exactly. <laughs> You're welcome. That was me. That was mine. <laughs> Anytime God. You gotta, tell, you gotta tell the ear canal story, I think, as a, as a, as a classic. When uh, I was in season 11, I was up there shooting, and uh, Mark Shepard gave Jensen Ackles uh, the gift of these these uh, ear monitors that we have, and they're all made especially to fit into our ears. So you have to have an ear doctor come and measure your ear and, and make a mold. Then you set the mold in and you get this which fits into your ear. So the, the ear doctor came to the set, uh, and we're all sitting around sort of waiting to go to set, and the ear doctor gives, gives the, gives the uh, examination to, to Jensen. And he looks in Jensen's ear and then he goes, most beautiful ear canal I've ever seen. <laughs> yeah, he had to take a knee. He got real emotional. <laughs> yes, we can take a picture. Um, well, I guess in the ear canal business, they probably have a perfect scenario that they go through never expecting to actually encounter. Right. That had to be overwhelming. I get that. There's a big poster in the ear canal, <laughs> of an ear canal in the office. Okay. That's what you strive for. So when you are a canalist, which I suppose. Um, we were all like, of course he has a perfect ear canal. <laughs> what can't he do? You know, he's not wrong. <laughs> um, thank you. Who's a good, uh, 
Thank you for your question. Thank you for really stumping the band. It really <laughs> had to think about that one. Thank you. Right there. Hi there. Hi. Um, this question is more towards Rich. Um, there was a fight in my home over how to say your last name. And um, my husband actually, to stop the fight, just called you Dick Spigot. <laughs> Because you, you need a problem solver like that in your home. So I was just wondering what's the weirdest pronunciation of You nailed it, kid. You got it. You win. Go tell your husband, ass, big ass face, that I said, well done. Thank you for your question. Yep. Hi. Um, I wanted to know which Loudon song you guys have wow. not had a chance to perform, but you'd like to perform. New so love, you need my lady? New love, new love, song you did want? You get, did you get, you get I know. the nice iced coffee? You like that? No, it's <laughs> fine. No, we're good. You know, <laughs> that, we're good. No, we're good. Oh, but, you know what's weird? Is I just, I just kind of conjured this. <laughs> I just you thought, thought about, about it. it. And it <laughs> That's how good Hillary is. I'm sorry, what was your question? Um, I was asking which Loud and Swain song you guys have not had a chance to perform, but you'd like to perform. Is there a loud and sweet song that we haven't had a chance to perform as like a band? Yeah. Live. Live. Also for the other guys, because they only do a couple. Oh, that they that they haven't had a chance to perform. Or, or that they'd like to see us perform. No, no what song have you guys like an old loud and sweet song for an old album that you'd love to do but you haven't done in a long time? Or uh, something maybe you guys wrote but haven't recorded, right. and, you know. Um Yeah, uh um, there's a song called Neurosis that's uh, off the Overachiever EP that we've played ever, maybe three times in 20 years. I have rarely played it, and uh, I really like the song, and it's just one of those songs we need to sit down and practice it, kind of relearn it to play it, and I'd like to play that live sometime soon. That would be awesome. Yeah. Do you have one, like an old, like, deep, deep track? I've never gotten to your That one? Oh, there yeah. we go. Yeah, I like that song, too. Can you, like, that Thank out? you very much. Thanks. Hi, I was just wondering, what's the weirdest dream you've ever had? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> weirdest dream? Weirdest dream. Weirdest dream? Weirdest dream. Weirdest dream. Uh, Bobo? <laughs> <laughs> um, this is a tough one. I, I'm gonna I want to give this answer. It's not a dream, but it's something. I, it's, a, it's a pretend thing I used to do when I was a kid. Uh oh. <laughs> uh oh, everybody. Here it goes. When I was a kid, and my mom would make the bed, it would be very. She did like hospital corners, like real tight, right? So I was a little kid. My parents would make my mom make me take a nap. I would get in bed and crawl in to be sure not to loosen the sheets and slide in as just as carefully as I could to be sure that thing stayed real taut. And I'd put my arms on the outside and I'd lay under the sheet and I'd pretend I was a ballpoint pen in my dad's pocket. <laughs> and I had this imaginary conversation all the time. My dad was an attorney and he traveled all the time and worked a lot like so many parents do. So I didn't see him as much as I wanted, so I'd have these imaginary moments with my dad where I'd ride around in his pocket and be talking to the other office, uh, you know, furnishings and the other <laughs> supplies. I'd be mean, like, what's going on, Scott State? How's it going? You know, make, right, hang up, talk to the erasers, make fun of the pencils, because, you know, I'm permanent. Um, I mean, that's not really a weird dream, but it's kind of an odd little childhood imagination thing I had as a child. I have a repetitive dream that I've had so many times and I, and I, I still have to this day. It's clearly anxiety is what it is. Uh, but I'm, I'm walking, everything's blackness around me, but all I can see is there's a long straight sidewalk and I have a top hat on. Uh, I'm walking and I'm just walking and I'm just walking and slowly the, like, I can feel the sidewalk start to melt away behind me so I start walking faster down the sidewalk because it's like catching up and at the same time my hat starts floating away so I start going like this, 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 like this
And then I wake up in a panicky sweat every single time. Every single time, the dream is the exact same. I have the same moment, I have the same reaction. I wake up sweaty and panicked. That's definitely a stress dream. Yeah. Robbie? I have a dream that I can dance. <laughs> and, I, and I dance on Broadway for all the world to see. Now, I don't know. I, Wait a minute. What? I was, you had me. I was like, what kind of dance? What show? Jazz. Ah. <laughs> um, I have a lot of panic dreams, and, and not dreams, just panic. <laughs> um, <laughs> I <laughs> I love the panic dreams, only they're not dreams. Um, I, you know, I do dream a lot. I have recurring, uh, like, play, like, I'll dream it's the middle of the night, probably because it's the middle of the night, and I dream, I dream that I'm in, like, hotels a lot. Probably because I live in the fucking hotels. But, um, and I have, my dreams are not fanciful. I literally have a dream with, like, Rich, and... We're just hanging out in the hotel and talking about the convention. Like, it's like honestly, I don't know if this could be a dream. <laughs> but, so anyway, I don't know. Try dancing. <laughs> oh, it's, it's a dream. It's a dream. Right. Da, 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 Best da, da, da. dancer ever. <laughs> oh my god. And you got Matt's top hat. It's a dream. Thank you for your question. That was awesome. <laughs> I, I panicky dreams only they're not dreams since when I'm driving. Oh, that's funny. You. Hi. Hi. Um, so I have a supernatural playlist, and in addition to all the songs from the show, I've started adding the songs that you use to introduce the various guests at the panels, mm -hmm. including thank you so much the three of you, Schoolhouse Rock. Uh -huh. um, so I was wondering how you go about choosing the songs that you use to introduce the actors. Well, you know, a lot of times we'll look at their name, maybe their name to something. There's a song written about someone with that name, or um, something to do with the character that they played. Um, the fact that there are three of us, or or just two of them, or the five of them, you know, do that kind of thing. Um, and then we, sometimes it's we just play a song we think is cool. But for the most part, we try to link it in somehow to that person. So, you know, um, every time there's a new person, we're like, a lot of times we'll have some new people on, on a Friday that we don't know. We don't know who they play. We don't know what it is. But we're going to look up their name, and their name, their name is Fire. They will play Fire by Jimi Hendrix. You know what I mean? Just something like that. Well, I, I like one of my, some of my favorites are over the years of doing this, I would say, 90% home runs, but there are those occasions where the song we come up with is, does not matter. Yeah, the yeah. guest comes out confused. Right. <laughs> like, how is that? Yeah. I don't. Uh, yeah. Because like it's the last thing an ad. But then there's ones that are so spot on. Like I always love playing Mark Shepard on with Mr. Crowley. Well, that's that's yeah. always like it's a home run. Which actually was Chris's idea. Chris, we used to play. Yeah, with Chris, yeah Chris was like, you should play Mr. Crowley. We're like, oh, we should play Mr. Crowley. <laughs> <laughs> that's Chris. That's nice uh, so yeah, but uh, my favorite song to play, which really was a, a reach for the for the meaning, but was Tom Pinnacat. We would play "Don't Call It a Comeback," uh, LL Cool J. Don't call it a comeback. I've been here for years, back on my feet, but the suckers and did. And um, it was. It's a dream you can dance. It's a dream I can dance. <laughs> it's not a dream anymore. <laughs> um, and uh, that we just played because he's a fighter, so he fights. And there's something funny yeah, about that cool. song. Also, he loved it. He'd come out and start shadow it. boxing. <laughs> so, uh, tell him don't box. <laughs> You're gonna, it's called tap boxing. <laughs> I, I always like doing the, when Rich is absent, we, and we occasionally have done the, it takes two to make a thing yes. all right, which is always that's, fun. That's our song when we don't have that's our that's, that's our silent stab yeah. why Rich can't defend himself because he's not here, so. <laughs> um, cool. And then we, most recently, David and Adam, um, we would we would play Led Zeppelin rock and roll. Uh, it, it was because the men of letters, British something. It was a British song. I, I don't know. There was a reach, and finally we're, they're like, "Why do you play that?" We're like, eh, it's "British," and they're like, "We should play Boys Are Back in Town." We're like, "Done." Also British. Yeah. So now we do Boys Are Back in Town. Irish, right? Oh, is that right? Is it, is I think Lizzie Irish. Irish. Uh, yeah. Thank you for your question. Thank you. 
Thanks. Be right there. Hey, how are y'all? Um, so my question is for Rich. So of all the many deaths that Gabriel had, do you think that they like really honored his character, or and if not, then how would you change them? No, I, mean, I, th I think uh, look, I, I thought the character was dead season five. I think it's really cool that Gabriel got another shot last year to come up and they then to fill in his uh, origin story and and how the Loki. Uh, sort of confrontation began and all that kind of stuff. I, I thought that was really great. You know, I, I when you're an actor playing a role, you never want your character to die. That's you, you like playing the role. Um, I think if I had to say, from a drama standpoint, purely impartially, I think the Mark Pellegrino Lucifer killing Gabriel was a much more dramatic and impactful moment than the Michael stabbing in the woods seemed kind of anticlimactic. It seemed like another brother stabbing me. Like, why do I keep fighting my brothers and getting stabbed? Note to self, quit fighting my brothers, you know? Um, so I didn't necessarily love how he went out at the very end of season 13. But everything up to that was fantastic. I mean, getting to be a part of the story of the mythology of that episode, of that season, of having an episode in which I got to play two characters and, and sort of explore what that looked like. I, I have nothing to complain about. It was a it was a wonderful surprise and gift to be able to come back to the show and play that character one more time for six episodes. I did I had done five total episodes until season thirteen and then I did six episodes of thir season thirteen, so I I over doubled the number of episodes I had done. So it, it's hard for me to find a, a negative in the experience because it was all really, really positive. Thank you for your question. You. Hiya. Hey. Okay, so um, after like watching the show and seeing you guys like show all the other people in the Bible, where do you guys think Jesus is? I don't know, but I look forward to Gary Oldman playing him. I think that'd be really good. Um, yeah, I'm excited to work with Gary. It'd be great. <laughs> um, yeah. I don't know. I always wonder if the, if the writers will ever find something there to play with. We'll have to wait and see. I think I think there's something. They've already cast Tim Amundsen, otherwise he'd be a good candidate. I know it's like he would literally it would be Tim Amundsen except for the fact he's already done the show. Exactly. But <clears throat> barring that, it would be Tim. So if, if you can't get Tim, my motto has always been: if you can't get Amundsen, go Oldman. That's just all, you know, just kind of my my go-to casting selects. Is that Amundsen? Is Amundsen available? Fine, get Gary Oldman. Yes. Yeah. Um, I don't know. We'll have to wait and see. Where do you think Jesus is? Uh, probably talking with Chuck right now about, you know, like, where he's going to meet Sam and Dean, uh, or, you know, any of the other angels. For sure. Makes sense. That's happening. I hope they shoot that scene. Thank you very much. You, young lady. Um, how would it feel if you guys woke up on e in each other's bodies on Supernatural? <laughs> Oh, so suddenly I were uh, Richard Spade was Chuck, or, or Gabriel was Chuck, or like that. We're, but we're, we're suddenly we're playing each other's characters. Yeah. I would. I tell you what. If I if I woke up when I was young, John, I would just sit there and stare at my abs. I'd be so proud. <laughs> I would be shirtless all day long. I'd be shirtless like at the post office. I'm like, hey, I mailed. Sir, you're not wearing a shirt. You're welcome. You know. <laughs> I'd be so. So far up. And if, and if I woke up as a trickster, I would just be in the porn the whole time. <laughs> Full episode with the porn. <laughs> Do I have to wake up as one of you guys? I would, I would, I'm gonna, just, I know me, wake up as Matt. You'll be glad you did. No, I, I was gonna say je, je, uh, wake up as Dean. No, I think we have to go, I think if, if, it's a three it's, of us? Yeah. Well, I tell you something. I, I know what's gonna happen. I know Rob edited pretty well. If he wakes up as Matt Cohen, this is I'm now taking it out of the show. If you wake up as Matt Cohen, you're gonna sprain your ankle getting over to see that Mandy. I know you're gonna Hey Mandy, how you doing? It's me, your husband, Matt Cohen. <laughs> well I'm not acting funny. I always act this way. See? See how I'm Matt? Don't you think it's silly that we're all dressed like this? <laughs> In Australia. Shouldn't we snuggle? <laughs> We were, watching, we were watching some Kings of Con, we showing Jeff Paris, and there was a projector, so we got to put it up on like a big screen like this. It was awesome, and the scene came up, and Jeff's like, isn't that your wife, man? And Robbie's like, hey, what's happening? Sue, I'll take that. Mm -hmm.
So for those who don't know, in case of time, Rob fought very hard to get Mandy the show in a role in, in a scene in which he got to kiss her. Uh, and Matt had to stand idly by and watch that take place. That's not. And it was, uh, it was unsavory. No. No. We did several takes. I directed that episode. We did several takes. And we got it. We shot it. We nailed it. And Rob kept saying, I need one more for me. Just, you know. <laughs> and, then, and then we finished it. And he goes, now this time, do it one more time. But film it with my iPhone. I'm like, well, why are we? Where is this going? We're not even lit anymore. It's okay. Just, no. <laughs> Now the truth is, we wanted, you know, we, we, we wanted. A, a, <laughs> I think Mandy was great in that role, and uh, and I, 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 we wanted Mandy to play that part. I, I, we, I think every, anything I want to say is not going to sound right. How so? Together, we decided together that what you you decided together that you would be the kissing one in the scene. Oh yeah, that. Yeah. Was that uh, which was more uh, interesting or, or uh, I don't know exciting for you, kissing Matt's wife or kissing Jensen's wife? Which one was? Uh... Jensen's wife was not Jensen's wife when I had to kiss her in the movie. I did. <laughs> Solid point. The door lover has a point. Yeah, the heckler has timing, ladies yeah. and gentlemen. Uh, uh, anyway, is JC doing any? All acting? right, that's it. We're moving on to another question. I've got a film idea for um, you right there. Hi. Hi. Um, my name is Milena, and my question is for Rob. What was your reaction um, to the character of God? I mean, when you were reading the script. Um, yeah, I, you know, I, I found out at the end of season five that the Swan Song, and so, and, and I, like many people who watched it, didn't quite catch it right away. I flipped right over, and I just, it says, he's dressed in all white, and he, poof, he dip, disappears. And I was like, what just happened? Where did I go? Why did it disappear? And then, um, Eric Kripke called me, he's like, so you're God. And I was like, oh, that's what, okay, that, wow, okay, that's a fact, uh, all right, oh, okay, now I get it. So, you know, that was when I found out at season five, um, which, you know, was obviously very exciting, um, but I've said this many times, sorry if you've heard this before, but I think Chuck was a, was a, uh, Eric Kripke created this character of Chuck sort of to speak through. Um, Chuck was always kind of Eric in the show, especially in the season four, season five, where Eric kind of got to make little winks to the audience and like make apologies for scripts that didn't work. And there were a lot of inside jokes that he got to do. And then ultimately he made the character of Chuck God, I think, because you know Eric was the almighty creator of Supernatural, so it kind of made sense. Um, and then fortunately the, the, kind of, the plot came back around again. Robbie Thompson wrote me back in, which was awesome. It was fun to explore this dichotomy of Chuck, who's so not godly, <laughs> and the character of God within this vessel. So that was that was cool. So it was an honor to do, but yeah, I was baffled at first. I was like, what the? Does that make, that make sense? <laughs> yeah. Did that answer your question? Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. I'm really nailing it. <laughs> <laughs> You're right there. Hi. Um, I wanted to say that I love watching Kings of Calm. You, Kings of Calm, you guys were amazing. Thank you. And how Matt was physically training a ridge, and instead of encouragement, he just spewed insults. Mm -hmm. That scene always gets to me. You um, wanted to write Matt as he is. So, you know, that's... <laughs> my question is, for all three of you, what are some of your favorite scenes that you filmed for the show? For Supernatural or, or Kings of Calm? Kings of Calm? Kings of Calm. Favorite scenes to shot? My favorite scene... I'm not in. It's watching uh, Rob and uh, Josh Myers uh, in the oh, bedroom. Ryan, so good. When, when Josh Myers is trying to commit suicide and then decides to rub an ascot all over his person and put it around Rob. I love that scene. I laugh at it now. I ruined many takes laughing while I was being shot. It's a great scene. Those two dudes were on fire. That's my personal. That's my I have a new one that, that just watching it in Australia caught me because 
you could see that moment that is super funny to the audience member where you didn't break, but it was behind your eyes when Rich had the couldn't could do the arms at the talent show. And here we go, Rich. Here we go, and you throw the thing, and you're literally like chucking it at his face. <laughs> and like on the last one, it's like you're close up, and like you see your face, and you're like just keeping it together, like to the point where it makes the person laugh, and they cut away from you before you break. It's so good. Um, other than that, anything that I got to do with these guys was my favorite scene ever. I mean, it was that was just awesome for me to play that character with these guys. I mean, that was it was incredible. It was an incredible experience for me. I hope we get to do more. You have a favor, Ron? Uh, I really like the stuff with you and Michael Cutlets. I think that's a really funny scene. Where that's you, funny. I, it's I, throwing you out the window. He's so intimidating, man. He's just <laughs> and you're, you're just trying to talk him down. I know. That was that was fun. And the stuff with you and Ron Livingston is super funny. Yeah. In the sauna. That's it was fun to revisit. It, it, we, we just we just we were in the green room in Australia. We put, put it up on the big screen and watched all the that's whole so season. Awesome. It was super fun. Uh, awesome. But thank you, thank you for watching the show, and thank you for. Uh, we're bringing it up here. It's fun to reminisce. Thank you. Thank you. Yo. Which monsters? Which monster is your guys' favorite monster? Fa uh, cookie. <laughs> cookie monster. I've always, I've always felt like I'm a boogie guy myself. I like. Uh, but here's why I like Cookie Monster. If I may elaborate, because he's a monster. I mean, he's, he's you know that's his phylum. He's a monster. It's genetically a monster, but he's a he's a friendly monster. He's furry. Yes, he has a problem, but the problem is with cookies. You know what I mean? So. It's, it's a problem that I think as a society we can work around and he's still a kind of a welcome figure in, in the most social circles, you know what I mean? Unless, you know, unless you work in a cookie store, he's an you know, okay, okay monster to have around, so I'm going to go with cookie. Robbie? I always thought that Oscar the Grouch was scarier than the cookie monster. A hundred percent. He's got a mood going. Oh man, such a crab. Yeah. Well, it's right there in his name. Oscar? The Grouch. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, a, I'm a boogie, a boogie, a boogie monster yeah. man myself. I like the mash. I do the monster. Oh, you do the mash. <laughs> I do the mash. I do the monster. You do the monster mash. mash. Yeah. yeah. <sighs> Thank you very much for your question. Uh, Rob Benedict on Broadway <laughs> in yeah. Monster Mash. You. Um, just thank you guys for what you guys do. Um, I was just wondering. This is more for Richard, but all of you guys together. I know that you guys get pranked by Sam and Dean a lot, and I know that the trickster has put Sam and Dean through a lot of interesting situations. So I was wondering, what on your mind would you want to see Sam and Dean go through? Uh, I think I think we've uh, we've commented before. It'd be fun to have Sam and Dean or Jared and Jensen, depending on you know either or. Be short. <laughs> I'd love for them to just be little bitty rascals running around. Can you help me out? No, I cannot help you up. <laughs> I'd love to see a whole episode where the two of you play your characters, and you know how The Rock and Kevin Hart make those pictures of little, and like you're just carrying around little Jared, and you're carrying around little Jensen, and it's their, their grown head on yeah. the baby body would be, would be pretty good. Oh, let's sneak in one more here. Yes, sir. Hello, um, this is my first uh, Supernatural convention. I'm so happy. Uh, Welcome to the Supernatural family, my friend. My question is, have you ever stolen something from the set? A prop or something? And this is the time to talk about it, guys. Right. Robbie stole the Impala. Yeah. Fortunately, they've got like three Impalas. Yeah. And they believe me that it's just my new car. <laughs> and they think it's a coincidence. Well, he put a mustache on it so they didn't recognize it for a while. And I changed the name. I call it Fady. <laughs> so I think I'm good. He's like... Tim's like, hey, there's the car. No, wait, hold on. This is a Tim Paula. This is not our car. It <laughs> says it right here. Uh, have you ever stole anything from the set? Uh, no, I haven't. Um, oh, that's not true. I did steal something. The first episode I directed, which is just my imagination, Jensen, thank you. Jensen's sitting in the, uh, and he's tied up in a chair, and he's doing that thing, you know, that they do all the time, the find the piece of metal and broke the rope up, rope up against it, cut the rope, and free yourself. I kept the rope. I still have the rope, but I just sort of a souvenir from my first directing effort. I just, you know, that was, that was something they're not going to need again. Versus, say, stealing, say, Jared, or uh, uh, the Colt, or something where they'd be really miffed. Or the Apollo. Or the Apollo. Hey, listen, you know, I don't know how you pulled that off, but kudos. <laughs> you know what you mean, the Tim Paula? Be cool. 
man. I have never stolen anything, but next time I'm up there, I will certainly steal something so I have a better answer. I promise. <laughs> Yeah, we gotta start stealing. We gotta steal more stuff. Start stealing yeah. way more stuff. If we, there's one takeaway from this, it's steal more stuff. Yeah. yeah. Thank you for the tip. Yeah. Ladies and gentlemen, that's Matthew Cohen. That's Rob Benedict. Thank you, Thank you, Now people who like to cosplay compete in a, 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 just a bloody, gory mess to see who can win best ensemble. You're competing for best ensemble. There is non-legal tender at stake here that you can use to buy merch, gifts, and prizes that are super randomly themed. You know what it's called? It's costume contest. A full contest sport. It can be me, I'm gonna enter. Adam Malin, everybody! Mr. Costume Contest himself. Hey everybody, how we doing?